I'm Old Big Len. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, I want to do a quick blog on here on uh, managing your own rental properties. I've done this quite a few times before, but let's just touch on it again here on a couple of topics here. Because as you guys know, I do a lot of work with investors. I'm probably, uh, you know, makes up a pretty good size of my business. I probably sell 15 to 20 downtown condos every year to investor clients. So I am uh, probably do a lot more than most realtors do. And, and one of the reasons for that is because I've been a landlord and an investor for in Vancouver real estate for coming up to 35 years now. So I know the market pretty well. I, I, I've built a good uh, system for what we want to look for in buying an investment property, what makes a good investment property, the things to look for. And then when one of my buyers, if it's a new investor, I part of my service is I will walk him through uh, what it's going to take to manage his own property. I'm going to give him all the documents he's going to need to file. I'm going to give him copies of several different tenancy agreements, checklists, form Ks, you know, all the things that you're going to need, how to run the ads on Craigslist, how to run the credit checks. I've built it to a really nice package that I will uh, provide and then I will tutor them for an hour or so on how to do everything and then I will consult them on their first one as they go through. Because it's not as difficult, I always suggest if you're living in Vancouver and buying an investment property, to manage your own property. That's the best uh, way to do it. Yes, you can hire a property manager, and I've got several that I can refer you to. And some of my clients have to do that. They might live in Alberta or Ontario or in the United States or China. And they need, of course, their, their absentee landlord, they need to hire a property manager. And I've got two very good ones, that I think they're the best, that I can refer you to. But keep in mind, even the best, in my opinion, and these guys are good property managers. I've hand-selected these guys, and it's taken me many years to get it down to these two are my two best, best property managers. But even they, are, in my opinion, are not going to do as good of a job as you can as the individual landlord. Um, and, and also, it's, it's going to save you a lot of money because a property manager is going to cost you anywhere from 8 to 12% every month plus 50% of the first month's rent. Now, I've got two very good ones, but I can't, I've seen other property managers that aren't anywhere near the league of the ones I've got. And a lot of people use these other property managers that I just don't think are doing a very good job. A, in screening the tenants, doing the proper credit checks. Basically, the first guy that shows up that wants to take the apartment, they're renting it to. So you got to be careful with that. Far better to manage your own property. So you can do the due diligence on selecting the tenant. And the other thing is that it's not as difficult as people think. The first one is always the, the more cha most challenging one, the first time you do it. Because it's all the new forms, the documents, how to run the credit check, how you're going to do the showings, what I teach them, what to ask the potential tenants, you know, filling in the applications, all that stuff. The first one, and running the ads, that's the toughest one. The next time you need a tenant, it is a lot easier because you've gone through it once. But best to always manage your own properties if you can. It's just a far better way. You're going to do a lot better job of screening the tenants because that's the whole key. Do not put just anybody in your rental. And the, the horror stories I could tell you here over the years of selling tenanted properties and some of the situations I've had, it all stems back to not doing your due diligence on the tenant. I mean, I had one not long ago, you know, I was the buying side realtor on this and the seller, this poor guy, you know, he rented a unit, did not do his due diligence on it. Uh, the girl came in, immediately cloned uh, five or six fobs, completely illegal and then ran it as an Airbnb. And this is a horror story I hear over and over again. There is no Airbnb allowed in this building. It's barred like it is for most stratas downtown. But you see, the game they play with this is that they sublet it out as an Airbnb and it's gonna take many, many months before the strata can get this tenant out. And that's the way the Tenancy Act works here. It's in favor of the tenant. So long story short, it took about six months to get this girl out. It took a couple of months before they caught on to the fact that this is being run as an Airbnb. Then it took another four months before they were able to get the legal action in place to get her to stop. But by then, the damage had been done. And they just move on to a new one. And this guy was faced with all kinds of fines and everything else and legal costs. <laughs> you know, He ended up selling it after six months. He sold the unit. I got it at a good price. It left a bad taste in his mouth. Well, of course it's going to. He got completely burned, but he, you know, 
a lot of that blame is put on him. There should have been some telltale signs there with this potential tenant. So run it yourself. The other thing I'll just quickly pass on, a lot of people ask me, tenant turnover. You know, Owen, what do you do when a tenant gives you notice and do you paint every time or whatever else? No, I don't. I had a guy say, well, I've got a tenant leaving in a couple of days and uh, you know, should I paint and that kind of thing. Well, first off, hopefully you're not leaving it empty for a month because you know, when a tenant gives me notice, they have to give you 30 clear days and hopefully you're on good terms with the tenant. That's why I always say, treat your tenants like gold. I do. If a tenant calls me and has a broken toilet or something's not working, I fix it immediately. I, I treat my tenants like gold. They're paying me a good rent and I'm, I maintain my properties impeccably. And if there is anything that needs to be done, I'm on it right away. So I have a couple of general handymen that I have on call that I can get. And then I've got contacts with floors and painters and all that other stuff. But if they give me notice and say, oh, and I'm going to be moving, uh, you know, at the end of the month, they give me 30 days notice, which they usually do. They usually don't give you much more than that. Sometimes I get tenants that give me a good six weeks and say, you know, it's October 30th or it's October 10th. And they tell me, oh, and I'm going to be out uh, in uh, December. So they give me a little extra time, which is always nice. But it, when that happens, I say, gee, I'm sorry to lose you as a tenant, but uh, I'd like to come over if I could in the next day or two and, and get a mutual agreement and tenancy signed. That way it's official. So you set the date that they'll be vacating. But the other reason is I want to go over there and have a look at the unit. It, in some cases, I haven't been inside the unit for three or four years. So I'll, I want to have a look if I haven't been to see what the condition is. If it does look like it you know, needs paint, and then maybe it's been seven or eight years since I painted, then I will do a paint job on it. But I probably only paint a unit maybe every third or fourth tenant sometimes. It depends. Some tenants don't hang up anything on the walls and they you know, treat the place, you know, keep it immaculate. Other tenants, you know, are a little more rougher on the, around the edges. They hang a lot of things, you know, pictures, TV, all that stuff. So I do it on a case by case basis, but that's why you want to be on good terms because once that tenant gives you notice, you know, you want to get that listing on Craigslist immediately because you don't want to lose a month's rent. Your, your window for renting is going to be that first three or four days of the month because that's when all the tenants are going to give notice to move in the following month. So you always want to, as soon as the tenant gives you that just over 30 days notice, immediately try and set up an appointment with them the next day, get the mutual agreements to end tenancy signed so you know they're going to be out and assess the property. If it does need paint or some other things, then, or in some cases, you know, it's dirty and you make sure that the tenant is going to, you know, have it professionally clean, those kind of things. And then get the permission from the tenant that says, hey, I'd like to show it starting next week. I usually say, can you give me, you know, Monday, Tuesday or Monday, Wednesday and a Friday, give me an hour here, an hour there, and I'll set some showing times. The lucky thing is in, in Vancouver here, tenancy vacancy is low. My units are all you know, highly desirable units. It usually only takes me a couple of showing days before I can get some applications and get a new tenant. So that's how I handle it, but I don't paint I, you know, some, every time. Sometimes I will. You know, sometimes I had a, just recently had a tenant turnover and uh, you know, the flooring was getting pretty bad. It was a cheap laminate floor in there, so I replaced all the flooring. And I worked that out with the new tenant. The new tenant was gonna move in on the first. Uh, I said, you know, we can still work around you. We can, you know, maybe keep some stuff in the bedroom, which was carpeted. I'd like to put a new floor down for you. Um, I'm hoping my tenant might leave a day or two early and give us a little more leeway. So these are all things you can kind of negotiate. But probably, paint, I probably paint every five or six years, depending on the wear and tear. And, you know, things like dishwashers, those I tend to replace about every six, seven, eight years. I don't even try and fix them anymore. Uh, those are probably the appliance that you do have to replace the most frequently for sure is a dishwasher. I'm Owen Big Len. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.